everybody, Des Stocker here. So today I thought I'd talk to you about my uh, first ever, uh, and hopefully my last, ever experience with having a flat tire on a motorcycle. Now I was driving my uh, 1985 Kawasaki uh, KLR 600, uh, this one here, and I was out for a nice little drive with my uh, girlfriend, who by the way later became my wife, and we were just out enjoying the ride. You know, uh, no, nothing, nothing crazy, just riding along. And uh, very much like a road like this, just enjoying myself. And uh, what happened was I was uh, coming down a hill, something uh, actually very similar to this here with a slight left and right bend. And all of a sudden my bike started to get into a very vicious uh, wobble and I knew something was wrong so I ended up uh, you know uh, fighting the wobble and uh, let off the gas and uh, sort of eased the bike very gingerly and very carefully off to the shoulder now the shoulder here on this particular road it's actually paved but the shoulder I had to stop on was actually about the same width, but it was uh, gravel, and that's what we call a soft shoulder here. So uh, I managed to safely stop the bike, and uh, you know, luckily, you know, when you're racing 250 Grand Prix motorcycles, you get them into wobbles fairly often. So it's something that you can uh, you, you get to be able to handle, or at least understand. But uh, having someone on the back who you were actually interested in and didn't want to like kill besides yourself kind of put the pressure level up a little high but apparently I had done a pretty good job because when I I got off the side of the road and I shut the bike off and she sort of leaned forward a bit and said is there a problem <laughs> and I was like uh, my heart was up my mouth, so I had to wait to get swallow it back down before I could say something. And then I said, I finally got off. I said, I think we have a flat tire. So I uh, we got off the bike, checked it out, and yeah, sure enough, it was flat. Uh, that particular bike had tubes uh, because of the spoke wheels. And this is back about, I'm going to say 1990-ish, so not a lot of people had cell phones. You know, the, again, the internet didn't exist and all that sort of stuff. So uh, we're sort of standing there looking around and uh, a couple guys on motorcycles drove by and they uh, they came back and asked if we were okay and I we talked and I said, well, I've got a flat tire and they asked me if I had someone to call or if I could get, they wanted to know if they'd give me a ride home. And I told them where I lived. And I said, oh, that's not a problem. We sort of live in that general area anyways. So they, uh, they each, uh, loaded one of us on each bike and they uh, drove us to uh, back to uh, my mother's house at the time and uh, luckily I had my uh, trailer for, but I took my race bike to the track and put it back on my truck and went back and uh, brought the bike home and got it fixed but it just goes to show you how you know motorcyclists you know take care of each other and help each other out when we see a friend in uh, you know, we see a, a motorcycling uh, companion out there in, in uh, trouble. We try to help him, even if it's something that helping a guy push his bike out of a parking spot where he having trouble getting it out, or they had a flat tire, or unfortunately a, an accident. So it's uh, it's it's sort of nice to see that the community has that, and even to this day still has it. It's it's not as needed as it used to be with the cell phones and you know uh, uh, geez, it's not as uh, needed as today with everyone having cell phones and being able to call for uh, toes at the drop of a hat but it is still nice to know that people do uh, you know still help each other out so anyways but I did uh, just let you know that little short story there. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Talk to you later.